we made it to the middle of the week. Welcome back to Forecast Lab, taking a look at a strong weather system in Colorado and New Mexico. There it is, stretching from the Front Range down to about El Paso. As you go west of there, it gets cooler, 60s and 70s in the Four Corners area. And all the way out there in Nevada, snow coming down at Tonopah, winds gusting to 35 knots. And it's actually a mix of snow and rain. And that's due to a new Pacific cold air mass that has spread in. It has not made very much eastward progress. A lot of these storm tracks are running about like that. So that warm air is flowing up into the Dakotas, into Nebraska, and into Iowa, where it's 90 degrees out around Waterloo. In Texas, the moisture is still flowing north. The dew points have relaxed a little bit, down to upper 60s for the most part, but the dry line extending from Midland to Guymon to North Platte. In between, there's that warm plateau air Temperatures well into the 90s, but dew points all the way down into the 20s and 30s. Up to the north, we've got some frontal warm front action. A couple of thunderstorm clusters here and there. And as you go north, we start picking up those 40s and 50s. And in the eastern U.S., it is a pretty quiet weather pattern, but we've got that pesky weather system off the North Carolina coast bringing some showers as far west as Baltimore, Norfolk, and Cape Hatteras. But as you go north, yeah, there is plenty of warm air up there. 80 degrees up in New York right now, and those 80s are found all the way almost up into Maine, where it's 77 at Caribou. And then just taking a quick look at the Pacific, and we're going to kind of focus a little bit closer to home so we can concentrate on the mesoscale. Weather system off of Vancouver Island. Temperatures warming up a little bit up in Alaska from what we can see. However, still a lot of cold air up there in the Northwest Territories and Nunavut. Temperatures in the teens and 20s. And a rather powerful storm system exiting Labrador and Baffin Island. Almost blizzard conditions there south of Iqaluit. And we got blizzard conditions, snow coming down across much of that area, so a little bit of winter still in effect. Checking out how things are hanging at SPC, they're getting clobbered up there in Minnesota, enhanced risk for this afternoon, and further south near that dry line, a slight risk from Boise City, Guymon down towards uh, Bebac Clovis and Midland, Odessa. There's your tornado risk area focusing on southwestern Minnesota. There's a look at the radar out of Clovis as we record this around mid-afternoon. Storms going up on the state line. And by the way, Clovis, did you have any idea that a couple of very noteworthy songs were recorded there? Buddy Holly, That'll Be the Day, Peggy Sue, Not Fade Away, that was all recorded in Clovis in the late 50s. I find that pretty neat, you know, some major parts of American history coming from an almost forgettable region of the Great Plains. Taking a look further up north, let's head up to Minnesota. The Sioux Falls radar indicating two clusters of storms, mostly moving to the north, and one little severe thunderstorm warning there and another up in Minnesota with a southern cluster. I wonder, were any songs recorded in South Dakota? I can't think of a single one. I know Sean Colvin is from there. Yeah, but of course, Minneapolis, Paisley Park Studios, Prince, Sheila E., all recorded there. There is no purple rain to be found on the surface analysis, but in terms of temperatures, yeah, some very warm weather. Pretty much from Chicago back to Des Moines and down towards Little Rock. Temperatures up into the 90s this afternoon. These are all forecast highs. Here are the records for tomorrow. Looks like that heat is spreading more aggressively towards the northeast. 
than what we saw on Monday. 90s up in Minnesota, Wisconsin, all the way down towards Texas, 97 in Wichita Falls, and up in the Northeast, 85 at Syracuse. All of those red plots, those are broken daily records. For Friday, the heat relaxes a little bit, still hanging on to it in Texas. Meanwhile, firmly breaking records from the Great Lakes into Maine, 83 at Caribou. The heat continuing to settle in Texas for Saturday, as well as the northeastern U.S., 88 at Caribou. Continuing that morbid pattern across the south-central U.S. and starting to pop up some records in Arizona, 103 at Tucson. Since that's gray, it's not breaking the record, but it's coming pretty close to the record. Waco, 99, Houston, 96, and it will be 97 at DFW. And for Monday, this is pretty far out, so this is significant. We should start seeing these forecast values coming closer to climatology. However, that's not happening, so this signals a bit of a heat wave across Texas and Louisiana. Expecting 100 at Austin. And very notably, over this six days that we've been looking at, or five days, there have not been any record lows anywhere in the U.S., I hope that is not going to be a trend, especially this summer. But I'm going to give you a little bit of this icing on the cake. These are maximum temperatures that are cooler, cool enough to break records. And that's happening tomorrow in Washington and Oregon. Highs coming only into the 50s in the western part of the state. And that's definitely good news for the wildfire season because that'll help retain some of the moisture in the vegetation. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to escape fire season, but this is definitely what we want to see in May. And checking in on Big Rig Steve, he's around East St. Louis. He's not transmitting at the moment. However, he's in this area of return flow, southerly winds coming up, and dew points up in the low 70s some very warm weather. And there's a look from Big Rig Steve's truck in East St. Louis. Looks very hazy, maybe four or five miles visibility. Just some cumulus up there, the atmosphere still mixing, but definitely a hot and dry day. So not much left to do except look at the SPC forecast. Tornado watch for that area we mentioned around Sioux Falls. Really not a whole lot of organization on these storms. So it does look like they're putting out some outflow. You can see those boundaries right there moving south. And there's probably a few others under here that are not being sampled very well. So it does have kind of an outflow dominant look and sort of an uncapped appearance as well. This gives us a rough idea of that environment. That outflow boundary, yeah, that was just right through here in the southwesternmost county. And we transpose that over and it looks about like that. So that's going to be outflow from these storms kind of surging to the southwest and then this other cluster will probably interact with the boundary, but they're moving north pretty quickly. So it gives them a very limited window of severe weather. This is the relatively pure air. Winds gusting up to 30 knots. So the photographs are going to be way up near the top of the diagram. All those vectors spilling over to the north side with that southerly component. So you could probably analyze this a little bit and maybe draw some outflow about like that. Another outflow boundary like this and probably extending back over here and you can kind of see that the best air is right there in whatever part of Iowa and Minnesota that is. So the best cells that have the best potential those are going to be the ones crossing out like that and that's probably the area I would watch that and maybe just slightly north of that boundary. And it always pays to take a look at what you're dealing with. 
let's sample that environment on the high resolution rapid refresh model. Uh, the temperature dew point spread is a little bit high, not overly so, but that would be one factor. Does does not look like it's very well capped. And that hodograph, that's what we're talking about. And in fact, the zero kilometer line would be probably even further, maybe up in this area here. So yeah, there is some helicity in this environment, but it's somewhat of a straight line splitting type environment. You can see the left motion vector way over off the line. Same thing with the right motion vector that gives us kind of a split across the mean wind profile. And the decape. Yep, that's up at 1300. So great potential for outflow dominant storms. And that's being enhanced by that layer of dry air at about 15,000 feet. And if we get further away from the storms, yeah, there's actually quite a bit of dry air all the way up to 30,000 feet. But man, look at that cape it's coming up with, 5,700. So let's take a look at those capes. Surface-based cape. Yeah, we're up there pretty high in some areas, over 6,000 in western Iowa. However, this is surface-based. You can see that it's only taken this little spot of 77 degree dew point. It's not factoring in the dry air that will mix to the surface. So that's not very realistic. We need to look at a mixed layer. This will give us a more realistic picture. The better parcels still in western Iowa, but there is some tapering of that moisture. It's not very deep and we rapidly transition into the drier air. So yeah, it's a little bit like jor maybe not a, maybe not as much shear, and the moisture not quite as deep as jor either. And of course by jor I'm referring to that 1997 tornado in Texas. That was kind of an extreme Cape event. Again, I don't think we're anything like an environment like that but it does kind of bring it to mind a little bit. All right, let's look at our forecast, looking at the GFS there. Storms up there in western Minnesota. Need to advance that a little bit. There we go. MCS moving through the overnight hours through much of the state, making it up to Duluth by midnight. And we're kind of left with this inverted trough extending out here. And of course, the main frontal system out there in Colorado. The moisture is still coming up into the central plains. For tomorrow, another round of storms in Nebraska and South Dakota. So yet another MCS for those same affected areas. This is kind of a stationary front setup. The front has just not moved very much. Storms are going up along that boundary and tracking over the very same areas day after day. Then we go into Friday. What happens then? Some cold air spreads into the northern and central plains. That pushes the action a little bit further to the east into Illinois and Wisconsin. Maybe even a few storms there in Iowa. For Saturday, let's see what happens. Initially, very weak flow across the plains. By afternoon, some potential there in Kansas. Probably the dry line starting to set up. And there could be potential anywhere along that. Looks like the sea breeze may also be getting started there on the Texas coast. Then for Sunday, you can see this little backdoor front through Oklahoma and Texas. The moisture impinges on that front. Probably a dry line off to the west. For the most part, it's not really doing much, but storms further east along that frontal boundary. And those move, look at that, it moves right down into Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi overnight. And our last stop will be Monday. Return flow continuing on the Great Plains, but mostly just some high plains action out there in Nebraska. Maybe some upslope flow going on in that region. All right, so that'll do it for today. Let me get this wrapped up and uploaded so you can begin enjoying it. And I want to thank our new patron, 
Jacob McMillan, thank you very much for signing up. And of course, thanks to our other recent signups, Stephen Kondrak, Jason Walls, David Fick, Brian Neben, Jesse Newsom, Brett Rose, and Craig Howe. I really appreciate it. I really didn't think this project was going to last more than a couple years, but I guess we're continuing to chug away. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening. Take care, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Bye-bye.